really good stuff here. Killer Scion. And then we untap our lands. That's perfect. Meet the... Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. I hope you're all having a magical day. We're back in standard. You heard me right. Not only that, but we have a brand new deck with a hidden synergy. Something that has been overlooked by absolutely everyone. It's good. We're in gruel colors playing with snow. No werewolves here. Breaking down the deck list, showcasing the strategies, the synergies held within, and then demonstrating in our gameplay footage. We'll of course wrap up like we always do with our final thoughts to close out the video. Thank you again. Make sure to like the video to show your support. And definitely if you like these standard videos, we are gonna need a lot of thumbs up on this video if you're getting more of them because All Runs Epiphany has not gone anywhere. It is there consistently. I played against it so many times today. It's absolutely dizzying. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at this brand new Gruel deck. All right, Gruel like you've not really seen before, focusing around the Snowlands. You're like, I've seen Gruul's Snow HGG. Get out of here, man. Uh, but what you may not have used within it is Jorn, God of Winter. Whenever it attacks, untap each snow permanent you control. Now this, for the most part, like I said, has been overlooked by everyone. Nobody's using this in Gruul aggro that I've seen. Reckless Stormseeker a 2-3, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature gets plus 1, plus 0, and gains haste until the end of turn. Daybound, nightbound, plus 2, haste, and trample, um, which is quite nice. And that's going to give Jorn the ability to enter play and attack, untap the lands, which is really cool. And there's a couple different ways uh, that we can benefit from that, whether it be playing another creature on our second main phase, Casting an instant speed spell for, you know, a battle trick or a combat trick, I guess. Or, you know, just increasing our strength and toughness to maybe do lethal, which is a lot of fun. Sinking our mana, not only through the playing of creatures, the combat tricks, but also through uh, value cards like Ranger's Class. We can dump mana into the levels of it, getting to level 3, and then free casting creatures off the top of our library. That's really nice, of course. We do have the Sculptor of Winter, which is itself a snow-based permanent, which will untap with Jorn, which is cool. Um, so, of course, you can use that mana early on, tapping the Winter, and then attack with Jorn, untap not only all of your land, but the Winter, spend a mana from your land, un or tap the Winter, untap that land, right? So that's going to be a lot of fun. And there's one more, you guys, and this is the best one. Saving the best for last, the un Unvenwald Oddity and the Behemoth. 4-4 uh, four, four with Trample and Haste, we can pay 7 to transform it into an 8-8 eight, eight with Trample and Haste, giving our other creatures plus 1, plus 1, Trample and Haste. Uh, absolutely astonishing how easy this is to pull off through Jorn, God of the Winter, right? Um, you know, if you have the Sculptor, it gets even easier because, you know, it comes in for 4, which isn't that expensive, and then we just need to pay 7 to transform it, which is, you know being done on its next turn right so this is entering on turn five and then on turn six you're uh, paying that ability pushing everything up and maybe even doing a little bit more with that turn right so uh the ideal play line here for me is a turn one pack leader a two one whenever a creature with power uh or mana value four or greater enters the battlefield you'll put a plus one plus one counter on it and then when it enters play, you'll put a plus one, plus one counter on it for each mana value four or greater that's already in play, right? So a very nice creature to get stronger throughout your match um, and a great turn one, right? And that's why we like it on our opening hand uh, turn one play. Next up, Sculptor of Winter is uh, where I want to go ideally. However, the Rangers class is very high value in the deck. We really want to be free casting those creatures off the top of our library. However, like I said, the Sculptor of Winter, totally acceptable. Turn three, the Reckless Storm Seeker. Now, this is where it's going to branch off and depend whether you played the Sculptor of Winter or not. The Sculptor is great because it can give you access to your Blizzard Brawl. You know, creatures fight if you have three or more snow permanents, which the Sculptor is included within. 
you're going to gain plus one and indestructible. So you can do that as early as turn. Uh, well, I guess it would be turn three because you'll spend your mana on the sculptor anyways. Uh, but the snakes can veil as well to protect it. And of course, the frostbite to deal some damage. Uh, if you have three snow permanents, three damage, if not just two at instant speed, which is quite nice. And then, you know, the storm seeker is in play. You get an attack in hopefully turn four is Jorn and Jorn will attack with the reckless storm seeker. Uh, you'll have one mana left over. So, you know, you can protect yourself with that snakeskin veil, which is very good. You can also blizzard brawl if your opponent's tapped and they have a defender, right? Give Jorn indestructible so it doesn't die. Attack. Now you untap four land. Boom. Partners in play. Boom. Oddity in play. If you have the partners, reckless storm seeker will trigger first. Put that on to Elena. Well, actually, Elena and Elena will trigger first. It'll go on the stack first. Pick whichever creature. Probably something with Trample, like the Oddity, or the Stormseeker, which can get Trample eventually. And then the Stormseeker will go on the stack after on Elena and Alina, pushing it up at either one or two. And then when it resolves, uh, you know, that power is going to be three or four, pushing up the Oddity, uh, or, you know, whatever you want by three or four, which is really, really good. Okay, so if you do play the Oddity, right, you can attack, get some damage, and then on the next turn, you'll be able to instant speed once Jorn goes on the stack to tap your mana you may need to be in full control and then untap them all once the stack resolves and then sink into your oddity which will be really good giving everything else trample plus one right so your pack leader now gains trample your sculptor gains trample or your rangers class uh wolf gains trample which is really nice storm Steaker, if it's not Nightbound, we'll have Trample. We're not putting it tonight, so maybe our opponent does. And then, you know, Jorn's going to have uh, Trample as well. And then the Oddity's an 8-8, which is uh, pretty goofy. So the amount of damage that you can put into play is absolutely obscene. And it's all thanks to Jorn's double cast um, ability. Because, you know, on turn 4, we're playing a turn 3, which isn't great. But we can protect it, which is fantastic, right? Uh, or, you know, remove something to get the certified attack in off of the haste of the Storm Seeker. And then, boom, we've got four available mana again. Oddity in play if you have it. Perfecto. Um, and then, you know, if you if it you don't have a bunch of creatures, maybe Helena and Alina. But if you do have um, a few creatures, the Oddity is going to be really good because you're giving them all plus one and travel. Uh, I know I'm beating a dead horse here. But uh, that's the deck. And what's nice about Jorn is you also have instant speed during combat phase, not just the oddity, but you can also do something like Inscription of Abundance. Whether you want to kick that or not is up to you. Uh, kicker's an extra three. Two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Target player gains X life, where X is the greatest power among creatures that they control. And target creature you control fights target creature you don't control, right? So there's a lot of versatility there as well. Three Faceless Havens. We've got the Highland Forest, which, you know, I'm still debating whether these are needed or not. And then just your basic Snowlands here as well. Turbo Jorn is definitely worth your while uh, i'm sure you already have the majority of these cards it might just be sprinkling in some of the jorns uh, that have been sitting on the sidelines to try a new deck out in the standard meta and it's performing fairly well in all honesty we'll have our wrap-up thoughts on how to best adjust it uh, at the end of the video we do have a little bit of a, a goodies there in our sideboard for you guys who do make it to the end of the video so i thank you all for your time and attention make sure to like comment and subscribe to help support and uh, yeah enjoy today's gameplay footage going first we have a really nice two drop really nice three drop really nice four drop as well what do we have here Rakdos? Uh-oh. They have so much removal. They have the meat hook. Hate it. Just straight for removal. Ooh, wow. You're brave. And they attack. I really would have liked to play the Oddity, but I'll take those two. Hit for three. Playing a little catch up. Looking for that land. Right, we really want that land.
This is fantastic. Really good stuff here. Killer Scion. And then we untap our lands. That's perfect. Meet the Oddity. It's your new friend. And we can give everything plus one and trample next turn. Do we kill it? Or do we take the trample? I think we have to kill it. Good enough. Good game. We untap and play another oddity. <laughs> we could actually... Um, no, it's 8 mana, right? No, it's only 7. So we tap 3 when we attack. 1, 2, 3. Jorn's ability pops. We untap 4. And then we dump all seven into the oddity. And that's going to give plus one, plus one, and trample to everything. And of course, the Stormseeker uh, still needs to trigger here as well. So, a ton of damage there, literally. On the draw, at least we have both colors of land. A nice three drop, good four drops. Hey, there's even a two drop, right? So we can find the third land. We can find the fourth land. We are all set. Gambling Ghast in play. Inscription. Interesting. That's a 3-drop on a token. Very interesting. This may be a misplay. Should have dropped the force and just pushed in, left the gas there. Oh well. Let's get some damage in. We could always top deck and untapped as well, and then we're off to the races. Yeah, I'd assume that they just have mass removal. And we do get the land, never punished. Do they have more removal? Down to 11. Merchant. 3 mana after the treasure. Woof. Let's slay the merchant here, hopefully. We get it. into the rangers class for six one block down to five i'd assume they create a treasure they have six potential eights uh maybe even mana it could be a, a hook here blood on the snow bringing back the merchant okay I mean, we're hitting for five. Let's see first if they have removal. Because if we do three damage to the merchant, it goes down to one. We hit for four. Not enough. So they sack all three treasures to draw. Looking for an answer. Let's just take the one damage. Play the pack leader. It gets a counter because of the oddity. Another blood on the snow. Decent. That's two wipes. But this is going to get us there. I mean, we had three oddities, so I guess we're just as bad. 
Good game, nice. We needed that. Opponent goes first. We have a nice one drop. Three and four covered as well. We can play another one drop on two. At the end of the day. That's the third land, which really helps. Looking for a fourth land still. Mono white is ugly. The exile here is absolutely disgusting. We're going to start it off with a portable hole. Frostbite can kill the Brutal Cathar. Skyclave Apparition. I feel like they have interaction, so I'm going to play slow. Right, they would just kill the Stormseeker anyways, I'm sure of it. Just hit for two, hold up Frostbite, and then we can slam in with these oddities. They really couldn't find the land. The oddity will push up the pack leader, so it can overpower the farmhand. Should be good. You can do it again next turn with the Frostbite active. Swing for seven. I assume they stop three. Pesky devil, you. That was your ambushed on the road. Target creature gets plus one, plus three until end of turn. Little battle trick there. We got juked. We got the juked. Their creature remains, which is the worst part of that whole thing. We traded with it. Eh, would have been fine. But now we have to deal with it another way, which is not great, and they do still have five cards in hand. I assume they would just take the oddity with exile. No, they want to destroy it. Now this is interesting. Homestead, Courage, 2-2, two, two, whatever, don't care. Another... Frostbite is quite enjoyable. It almost makes me feel like I can waste the first. I doubt they block. They're going to at least homestead that farmhand again, and then I can take it. It is sorcery speed, so they wouldn't be doing it with other copies. But again, they did have the ambush at instant speed, so it's like, ooh, what is safe and what is not? I assume they would tap out here, though. Oh, the Paladin's class. I forgot. I forgot about the Paladin's class. So now the farmhand can have indestructible through the escort, but not a big deal. Right? I don't think that matters. Play the Seeker. Slay the Spirit. Just, uh, because why not? They could still get us. Let's see, though. They'd have to triple block the Seeker. So 
So we can kill two of their creatures. Hit for four. I think that's good. So they'll need to put the escort in front of it as well. Um, because now we can just easily kill Flyer. Which isn't what we wanted to do. Now the escort dies organically. The life gain is kind of annoying, I guess, right? Down to eight. Play the land, why not? It brings us closer to seven for the oddity. And now watch them use exile that we're out of cards. Uh. Kathar is good. Nice defender. I would honestly maybe just homestead that. Put it to five. They do on the farmhand instead. It gives them coven to transform it. We throw in the attacks first. We pump into the oddity after. I guess let's look at the, the treasure. Like, we're going to use that, maybe. Oh, we'll draw something to interact with them. They can't let it go through. Blocks do need to be declared, for sure. Which means they'll lose their life gain. Or at least the ability to have Coven available to transform it. They're tapped. Just thinking about how to block. Or they've left the match. They're so upset. They're like, I'm out of here. Which doesn't make sense because they could survive. But I'll take the win. On the draw, turn two is nice. Turn three is decent. Three Blizzard Brawls. Are you serious? Come on. Against the control deck, too. Ah, the Is It build. Can't wait to play against this. Rips neck back in sarcasm. Interesting. Just a divide. Makes sense. Let's hit for two. All of these glitter balls are 100% useless. Three dead cards in our hand. That's great. Let's try it again. I assume it's the exact same. Yep, 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 yep. Another two. Maybe we can kill tokens later. Windfall. Oh no. Land and tap. They're going for it. Another dead card. Wow. What a time to be alive. Hit for five. Down to eleven. And turn. Yikes. That is eight available mana. There's a mascot exhibition. Really? Blizzard Brawl, you could come back to save the day. Let's snag the token. Try to snag the uh, flyer. I think they've got a bounce spell. Kind of annoying.
the indestructible still allows us to hit through. Down to seven. We have a backup. We also have the oddity in hand, which isn't the worst. Sciences, they're up to nine. Playing a white land. Ooh, daring today, aren't we? What would they possibly need that for? Let's see. Ah, divide by zero. Tap out. Interesting. Only we had a land. But I guess this feels best since they're tapped. Just get confirmed damage. Right, hit for five. I guess those blizzard brawls did the trick. I thought they were wasted. We still have two storm seekers. But, you know, we're to the point in the match where everything goes wrong. Five mana, potentially. Isn't really enough. Let's play the Ranger's Glass as well. It's not great. No attacks. We're chilling. We're chilling. If I can play Jorn, we can get away with it. Imagine they have a. I can't believe they sent it tonight. That cannot be good. Can we just overwhelm them with trample? I think we can. Or just with attackers in general. So, this is not good, right? The Hallbreaker Horror, diff like this. Wanting to get Jorn out, but I'm sure they have a bounce spell. So it's like, I'm going to play him because I want to untap my lands. But then it's getting bounced before that happens. So it's a better chance to play the Seeker and try just to get to the next trigger. Which we have successfully. They didn't bounce it beforehand. So, you know, I assume it's removal based, right? Like damage based. We swing in with everything. All right, they're down to four. Only have three blockers. Now, here's the horror, right? Big surprise. You know, haven't seen that. Now, I guess the question is do they have a two drop cast on top? If they did, they'd do it here. So I don't think they do. This is lethal damage. So they must just bounce them. They definitely have the spell. This is Cinderplasm. Great. Great, 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 great. Oh, we still get lethal through, though. Math is for blockers. They must have done that wrong. I, I've never seen anyone lose a game with Hullbreaker Horror in play before. Going first, not with this hand, we're not. Let's toss it. Uh, she doesn't look good, but 
we will keep it. I guess the abundance can go. Turn two, Ranger. Turn three, Jorn. If we get the land. I assume we will. Ooh, I wish. Two Blizzard Brawls. Again, right? This freaking Blizzard Brawl. It's everywhere. The blocks. I'd assume they have an inscription. Let's just push in. Looking for three. Maybe we can race. And then we have protection. Looking for a fourth land to play Jorn. Greedy guts. Unless they have another. Uh, oh no, we have an instruct. Uh, Hexproof, sorry. Just hit for three, whatever. I think it's okay to play Jorn. Cat hair every time. All over the place. Ooh, the chariot. I haven't seen that in a minute. This is the uh, unadulterated version. Two two twos. Say what? I'll take that damage. Blizzard Brawl, the cat token. So if they want to crew it, it has to be now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But are they just going to block? Like, I don't see them blocking this. But we should still kill in case they make um, the Planeswalker. Right? If they play Ren and Double Tree, that would be super annoying for us. This is a hit for 11. This is basically lethal. Maybe the extra creature does the trick. Rangers class token basically won the day. Oh man, where's my oddity? Good game, we push in. We have enough attackers to just go around them. On the draw, land is nice. Blizzard Brawl can, you know, just kind of sit on the sideline for now. Turn two, class. Turn three, Jorn. This is hard. No blocks. We should because they'll boast. Straight chillin'. Still looking for our red source. Jorn's in play. Or we should save the snakeskin to protect it because it's looking like there's some exile here. <laughs> Interesting. That doesn't seem right. No blocks. Savior of Allenbach needs to train. Red source off the top. Just 
just kill it, right? Push into the class. Onto the pack leader. You know, that's five. They might block. Goes through. Next turn we can Jorn and protect with Snakeskin. Luminarch is good. Sun Gold Sentinel's alright. There's a lot of meat in those seats. Hit for four ourselves. Let's just swing in with the pack leader for four. They might not take Shorn with Exile. If they... Oh, I hate my life. Dang it. As soon as we let our guard down. We deserve that. We deserve that. It's alright. Force them to boast. Push the pack leader up. I mean, those are some fat pack leaders. Do we race them? I think we do. It's 12 damage. They should at least block one with a token. Wow. If they have Exile on Helena and Alina, we get hit for four, five, six, seven, eight. Land and play. But then we'd swing for lethal, right? So I think we kind of just get through here barely. They have two defenders. Could be removal. Bind or another creature that takes basically lethal. No, we have lethal ourselves. Right? Just with a haven. And that should be three damage, as we have four attackers. They only have three defenders. Good game. I was certain after we played that snakeskin and then lost our creature that it was all over. Going first. Mm, I like the sculptor. That's not too bad. Rank number 81. Uh-oh. What does the like top 100 player play? Mono black, that's gonna be gross. Rakdos. Nervous. Let's just go all in. We need to push up that class. Gulfport Merchants. It's, it's good, it's good, it's good. What's up with this land? Alright. 
class is ready to rip. No attacks. Hopefully they don't deal with it. Because if we could free cast off the top, that would be nice. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Kind of thought that was going to happen. Any deck that plays deck. Any deck that plays black. We could still swing in, right? We're going to be a 4-4. Let's just take it anyways. It's a draw engine. Forest on top. Not great. Epic here's fine. They create a blood token. They sacrifice the blood token for a double draw and make a treasure. Land in play. Another Epicure in play. Make a blood token. Do one damage. Nice. Oddity off the top. Let's just push into the one with Trample. Decent. Five damage through, down to 14. We're losing damage through the hook, though. Four cards in hand, three cards in hand. Burn down the house, nice. They gain two life. It's not ideal. Let's play off the library first, just in case. Hit for eight. Not too shabby. Down to eight. Can we survive? Probably just like another hook right here. <laughs> Don't even say those words. Deadly dispute on the treasure. Draw two, make a treasure. One, two, three, four. Four, five, merchant in play. Uh, wow, they're going all in. Dang. Wow, they are going all in. Okay, that's a lot of meat. We don't get much. We could push in for trample. But I don't want to die, so I'm just going to take a harvester. Swing in, push up trample, and now we survive it. It's a two. All right, land on the top. It's not great. We lose the oddity. We're gaining life. They sack the treasure to draw. One, two, three, four, five. Twitch in play. That's great. We have no trample. Play off the top. Shoot. Push into the Seeker. I guess we should have double attacked, probably. I was worried about double block, right? But they, they wouldn't have been able to double block. Ooh, we should be playing slower than this. That might have been gross. And then the mascot exhibition. That's not good either. The prince or minus five. Or they're bringing creatures back. Yikes. So those can just kill our, our, our things, right? Because they have haste. Nice. Oh, man. We messed up and get punished. Those are very good. Especially when being played from the grave with haste. Gross. Now here we just, uh... I don't... I, 
I don't think we misplayed bad. I think we still would have lost. But it just wasn't ideal, right? Land on the top, of course. Damn. You straight up die. Good game. We'll show ourselves out. Right? That's plenty of defense there. That was a good match, though. Nice deck. Holy Toledos. Um, you know, I know I didn't show it a ton in this video, but I had probably an hour's worth of is it matches, uh, not included. Some wins, some losses. I just don't find it interesting to play the same match of Magic over and over and over again. But hey, you guys really want standard from the sound of things. So this is kind of what we've got. Um, I should punish you by only putting those is it videos uh, or matches in the video. So you're like, oh, this is why standard's not the greatest. Um, but you know, I'm not gonna do it. I'm, I want entertaining, uh, you know, footage for everybody. Uh, you know, some good content. And I think we did a decent job with it today. Um, we didn't really get to pop off with the playline as much as we wanted, but that's what playing in Mythic is, right? These are very competitive matches and there's going to be a lot of interaction. This brings me to my wrap up thoughts. Snakeskin Veil. This should be a four of in the build. I'm going to come out and say it. Uh, it should definitely be using four of. We should also be using four copies of the Sculptor of Winter and four copies of the Inscription of Abundance, right? This is how I want to edit the deck in the future. And, you know, as good as Blizzard Brawl is, is it winning us matches, right? Is it the deciding factor that allows us to beat down our opponent? I honestly don't think so. Yes, it is cool, you know, play Jorn, they're tapped out. Here, kill their creature. Now we attack, untap, there's another creature. Very good. But what if they just remove Jorn? And now I was playing this deck in the play queue, and it was fine using Blizzard Brawl that way. It actually worked very well. However, in Mythic, people know that they need to remove your creatures, right? So uh, they've got it ready to go, and I think that's maybe potentially where the snakes can veil uh, inches out ahead. The Frostbite didn't really see uh, as much use out of it as I'd like to. However, I do feel that it's necessary to maintain our balance of red to green spells and uh, frostbite should probably be included I think uh, however you know we can maybe take something else that's not snow related like play with fire and deal a little bit of direct damage that scry may also potentially help us get the land or the uh, the you know the instant sorcery the non-creature off of the top for ranger class level three so there's some things to consider here. I'd, of course, I'd love your guys' thoughts and opinions. You know, leave those down below in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed the deck. And uh, more importantly, enjoyed a little bit of standard finally again. Thanks so much. Make sure to like the video to show your support. Comment, uh, like I said before, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more great content just like this. Have a magical day, and we'll see you soon in the next.